Hello, hello. Welcome to the Happy Productive Podcast. I'm Jennifer Dawn, and this is where we help you unlock your full potential so that you can get out there and you can create the life and the business that you want. I'm so excited today because we're going to be talking with Michaela Donato. She is the owner and founder of Donato Design and Decor, and I'm so excited to talk to her today, you guys. She's not only a designer, but she's also a decorator who is passionate about helping people take the overwhelm and all that decision-making out of their dream home. Michaela is committed to making your dream space serve, serve your lifestyle and all of your needs so that everything in your life becomes easier and more beautiful. And I have to tell you guys, you know, we've talked about this on the podcast before about the spaces that we're in and it's not just people um, and places, it's also our spaces and we want our spaces to evoke the emotions that make us feel good because when we feel good and we're in a happier place, we're going to be way more productive. We're in a way better place to show up and deal with any challenges that life may present us with. And so I really, really do believe in surrounding ourselves with beautiful spaces, whatever that might be for you, not what somebody else's definition of it is, but what your definition of it is. So Michaela, welcome. I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. Thanks so much for having me. You're so welcome. Okay, we're going to dive right in. And I, I'm going to make a confession. In the beginning of the podcast, I am completely design impaired. I just am. Like, if you ask me about your business, like, I can talk about it all day long. If you ask me, like, how to decorate a room, I'm just going to, like, give you a blank stare because I just, for whatever reason, I don't have that DNA. I even had lunch with my two best friends yesterday, and they both have the gene, the designing gene. And I'm at my girlfriend's house and it's beautiful. Like everything she's done is beautiful. And so I love having a beautiful space. And I'm sure some of you listening can empathize with this, but if you are design impaired, like what do you do to be able to like still have a beautiful space if you don't have like the designer's gene? So I think, yeah, like it, it feels so good to be in a space that, that just feels like it's been well curated, right? And like well thought out and and we all kind of want to achieve that. But yeah, if you don't have it, then you don't have it. It's kind of like the math gene. If you don't have that, you don't have that, right? So um, it's really, I think it comes down to just kind of being in tune with what makes you tick, right? So um, noticing and being conscious of the spaces that you go into that make you feel good and what, what was it about that space that that you noticed that you enjoyed or what was super functional about it um and what kind of what really caught your eye so just being open and and inspired by all of those different things is really step one i think um and yeah just getting to kind of know yourself and your style but even that like is almost easier said than done right so sometimes it does take um an extra set of eyes to just kind of see the things that you might not see. And when we stare at our own space every day, all day kind of thing, like we almost stop seeing it. So really to just get a second opinion. And even if it's your kids or your husband or your partner or your friend that comes for a visit, like just getting that kind of sense of of how it is perceived might kind of open your eyes to different possibilities. So, yeah, I love this so much because it really is about getting help, getting some help in there when you don't necessarily quite know what to do, but there are people, um, everybody who's listening, there are people who do know what to do. <laughs> Even my girlfriends were like next month, lunch is at Jennifer's house and we're all bringing like our Pinterest boards and we're going to help her figure it out. Right. But yeah. you know, there's that part of me that's like, oh, you know, I don't want to ask for help or I don't want to like show a weakness because I'm a female and I should be able to do this. And I can't, like, I can ride my horse and I can like, I can be on my husband's motorcycle. Like I can do those things fine. But if like shopping and putting two things together in the living room, I'm like, oh crap, I can't do that. So, but you know, if you're listening, you may have experienced this where you're just like, uh, I'm just a little nervous to ask for help because it's my home it's like your most intimate space. It's where, you know, you get to choose who you're going to let in, who you're not going to let in. 
but that's also why it's so important for this space to really feel good for you. And so I think asking for help is a great first step. And so you're a designer, people ask you for help all the time. And so let's talk a little bit about like, you know, um, if you've never worked with a designer before, what does that really look like? And if, if you're listening and you're like, hey, I, I, you know, it sounds so intimidating sometimes, I think, to work with a designer, to have them come in and help you with the space. But can you just give us an overview of like, what does the process really look like in working with a designer to get some help in this area? Yeah, so I think you're right. Like it is such an intimate space and you have to be sure that you're working with the right person and that you trust them because yeah, you're totally giving the reins to to someone else on on something so personal. So um, I totally get that kind of hesitation before jumping in into something like this. Um, but I think, and so kind of how, how I like to help people and everyone does it a little bit differently, but um, is starting out by getting to know your lifestyle and getting to know what your needs truly are in that space and just, um, yeah, being really kind of open to your family, your lifestyle as, as an individual, um, and then keeping that at the forefront through the whole process so that um, you really feel comfortable with everything. Um, and the main thing I think is a designer can really come up with that vision. If you don't have the vision, um, that's what I do. I come up with that whole thing, um, considering your lifestyle, considering your needs, considering your favorite colors and fabrics, um, and then communicating that with you because it's one thing to have that grand vision and, and to implement it. But if, if I can't communicate it to you effectively and get you on board with it, then um, that's, that's not going to make you feel confident. So it's, it's sourcing everything and, and showing you the drawings so that you can kind of get just as excited about it as I am, um, and really put your trust in, in the next steps. So, um, from, from there, it's about like the pricing and the ordering and, and everything like that, um, and hiring, whoever is needed to kind of make things happen. So being the bridge um, between the final result and whatever contractors are needed um, and just setting everything up and making it happen, right? So I think it's one of those processes that it is intimidating to kind of take the first step because unless you've gone through it before, you you don't really know what to expect. So um, yeah, just finding finding someone that's really gonna make that whole process clear to you from the start is, is really gonna help you move mm -hmm. things along and say, yes, let's do it. Um, and as far as the process and kind of how I take the overwhelm out of the whole thing for you, we, we start with, a discovery call where I do lay everything out and I do kind of illustrate the entire process for uh, to you from start to finish. Um, so we know if we're right, the right fit for each other. Um, and then from there, we kind of launch into things with um, our first on-site meeting where um, I come up with the initial concepts and the big picture and we get inspired with all um, some style mood boards and that kind of thing. I lay down the um, color palette, which becomes the foundation of kind of everything going forward. Um, and then I set out a clear game plan and, and a scope of work. So it's just clear and transparent from the start. Um, and then, like I said before, like I design everything from head to toe. So um, all the finishes, all the furnishing, everything like that price it all and then present it to you. So you see that final product before anything gets ordered, or anything gets started. So mm -hmm. you're totally on board and confident. Um, and then we tweak what we need to tweak. And um, with your approval, which really is the only decision that you have to make through the whole process, because I'm not bugging you every other day with, okay, 
is this rug good? Is this hardware yeah. good? Like you give one big okay at that presentation um, and then you're good. You can kind of put your feet up, right? So um, that approval and then from there, I just make it happen and you can kind of lay back until I reveal it to you and then you kind of get to walk into that vision and that dream space that that we created and um and that I started to work towards so um yeah that's kind of how it looks and then from there one of my favorite parts is that you don't even have to worry about the style upkeep and the maintenance because with a scheduled kind of check-in I can totally take that kind of burden off of your shoulders as well so it's really um, a long-term process that has one kind of big fix and then it's just smooth sailing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. This sounds so amazing because just <laughs> having somebody like guys, like if it's so important in the space that we're in, right. We want that space to evoke positive emotion. And you guys know what I'm talking about here. Like when you walk into your kitchen and it's filthy and the dishes, you know, that's full of dirty dishes and the floor is dirty and you just feel like, uh, oh my gosh. But when you walk into a beautiful kitchen that's super clean, it's like all of a sudden you're like, oh, you know what? I feel like preparing a beautiful meal in my beautiful kitchen. And so, and it can be for every room in your house. And so if you have an area in your home right now, and especially if it's a space that you like to spend a lot of time in, that's why I think it is so important to invest a little bit of time, resources, whatever, in making that space evoke the emotions that we're after. Do you want the space to make you feel calm or safe or at peace or whatever that is? And I love how you mentioned like mood boards and color palettes and because you can use the colors, you can use the furniture, you can use the decor to really create that emotion that we're trying to drive. So we walk into a room, we feel good. We feel the way that we want to feel. And I, totally. I, I love that if you don't have the vision yourself, it's okay. All you have to do is ask for help. That was one of my takeaways I took from what you said was one, ask for help. Mm -hmm. uh, be willing to go out there and look for somebody who can help you with this. And then two, make sure that you interview some different people and get the right help because you want that right person who's going to be in your space um, so that it is a safe process as you go through, you know, letting somebody into your home. So loved that so much. So what happens, I'm really curious, like, so when you work with your clients and they have a space that is just not feeling the way they want it to feel, and you got, you go in and you, I love how you said reveal, right? You do the reveal <laughs> on their space and it's completely transformed and it's beautiful and it's everything that they ever wanted. Like, what do you see from them? Like, what are some of the things that you hear? What are the, some of the things that they say, these people who have taken the time and invested time and money and really making their space beautiful? Yeah. So it's <laughs> actually, it's funny because I, uh, I, I say I, I like to take the overwhelm out of the whole process, but at the end, it's, it's like truly an overwhelming feeling of just happiness and like, oh my gosh, like relief, right? Like, it's just, it's done. Like, this is, this is what I wanted. I didn't know that I wanted this, but this is exactly what I didn't know that I needed, <laughs> right? So it's just like, oh my gosh, I can... I can breathe easy. Like I get to, I get to come home to this every day. Like it's exciting. And, um, people often say like, after living in the space for, um, a few days or weeks, like just, they just feel more put together and more at ease in their day-to-day -day activities. And, um, the good parts of their day have, have gotten better. So, um, like, for example, I worked with one client and, and she just loved her morning routine, having her coffee um, and just loved to look out the window and just kind of be um, to start her day. And it was just like, OK, we're going to emphasize this positive part of your day and put an awesome armchair right by your favorite window and um, and pair it with the perfect side table. And it's just like considering those little things do make the good things better. And um, 
the bad things better too. So you're not putting those things off. You're not dreading them anymore. Like something as little as adding a runner to your kitchen area is going to make doing the dishes that much easier, you know? So it's just like those little things can totally, um, just transform the way you do and the way you think of your day-to-day activities. So I think that's the biggest thing that, that people appreciate about, um, that kind of transformation is just the, the day-to-day living is just so much more enjoyable. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Even just the visualization of somebody who loves to, you know, sit at the window with their morning coffee, like the perfect chair that you want to sit in next to the side table, next to the window to just take that element of your life and just kind of blow it up and make it Mm -hmm. that much more special. I love that so much. Like that makes me want to like go sit by a window and (laughs) (laughs) no, it is really nice. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's so beautiful. And, and you guys, you know, when you're thinking about your spaces, and you think about these elements of your life that you really love being able to maximize the space to really emphasize those things that we want to like put our claws in and like hold on to. I love that so much as a tip. Good. Yeah, no, I, I think it. it's, it's super important to just, yeah, emphasize those, those good, good moments, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other tips that you want to share as far as just like things that anybody who's listening could do to make their space just more clean, uncluttered, feel more beautiful? So yeah, the biggest thing I think is having distinct spaces for different things. So kind of, and it it doesn't matter how big the space is, like just even having a shelf dedicated to where you put your work bag at the end of the day. Like that's your, that's your designated space for, for that thing. Like that can just help you feel um, more organized, more put together, more just kind of at peace with, with what's going on. Um, But as far as like aesthetics and stuff like that, um, one of the biggest things and something that I, I kind of, a tip that I always give is as much inspiration as you can take from nature and from the outdoors, the better. So any time you have a chance to bring in some fresh flowers from the garden or have a potted plant um, beside your bed or whatever it may be, the more of that you can do, the better. Um, that instantly increases your your positivity and and um, just your happiness in this space. So the more of that you can do, always, always, always opt for that. Um, And then the other big thing is just personalization. So having a family photo um, over your sofa is a great way to add just that personal touch to a space and it just makes it feel so much more like your own. Um, And that also, without a doubt, increases your, your happiness in this space too. Oh, this is so awesome. Even just, I think simple things like, um, you know, a fresh flower on your desk where you work can just sort of change the mood and lift the space so much. Um, I also love what you said about, you know, having a space for like, you know, your bag at the end of the day, um, for happy productive, right? We talk about the planner and in the planner for daily planning, we talk about everything in one place, right? You guys, you can't have sticky notes and notebooks and 12 planners and it's all over the place and then expect to feel organized. You've got to make sure it always ends up in one place. And I love how you kind of took that into the home of making sure that the the things in your home also have their one place and this is where they go. And that in itself will just really help create a sense of more calm and organized and everything in the house has its place, just like in your planner, everything in one place. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. Oh, I love this so much. Okay. um, This is happy productive. So I'm curious, I'm going to throw this at you. Is there a productivity tip that you would like to share that's worked for you that you'd like to share with the audience? Um, Oh my goodness. So yeah, definitely the having having a space for everything is um, 
is the best way to kind of stay productive. But on a kind of side note, other than um, other than <laughs> specifically within the home, but just in general, um, I've recently been obsessed with um, snoozing my emails. So I'll open it, I'll read it, and then I'll snooze it until the day that I need to focus on it or something like that. Uh -huh. So I have been loving that. Um, and it just clears my head and lets me kind of focus on being creative and focus on um, whatever I'm doing in that moment and not have to worry about those little things um, kind of that are in the future. So that's something that's kind of helped me be productive just in, in day to day. <laughs> kind oh of my stuff. gosh. I love this so much. Is it a, is a software app that you added that lets you snooze the emails? I've heard of boomerang where you can like set it to come back to you. Um, but is it a different app? No, I just, I don't know if it's on every email platform, but it's just right in my Gmail. There's a little okay. clock and I just click it. You can pick exactly what time of day, what day you snooze oh. you. And yeah, it's been a game changer. <laughs> oh my God. That's so awesome. Like I literally have to like snooze my entire inbox when I'm trying to work on, on my business. And I really snooze it just by not turning it on. Cause as soon as I turn it on, I'm sucked in there, but I love yeah. this feature. You guys, if you didn't know it exists, you can snooze in Gmail and send it back to you when you're ready for it. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that one. <laughs> okay. Awesome information, Michaela. Thank you so very much. Can you tell everybody where they can find you if they want to get more information about your services? Yeah. So, um, my website, uh, donatodecor.com, um, is probably the best way you can get a hold of me there. Um, and actually, um, yeah, you can book a free discovery call there as well. So that's something kind of exciting. And then um, social media is at Donato Decor. So Facebook or Instagram. Um, and yeah, you can always find me there. Oh, fantastic. We'll put that in the show notes as well. So you guys can find Michaela. And, and I just want to also say to all the listeners, like depending on the state that your house is in or your car is in or whatever it is, just take it one space at a time. Like pick a space that you spend a lot of time in and like work on that one first, get some help, get the right help and just take it one space at a time. But I think it's so worth the investment when we talk about happy, productive of looking at the spaces that we're working in and really making sure that they're set up to evoke the emotions that we're, we're most after. All right. Thank you so much, Michaela. Um, for everybody listening, if you want some more help with this, if it's design work, don't call me because <laughs> clearly I am not going to be able to help you. But if you need help with your business, come check us out at jenniferdawncoaching.com. And if you're, if today is the day that you're ready for a better time management system, then of course, check out Best Planner Ever, www.bestplannerever. Okay, you guys, that's it. Get out there, take the overwhelm out of your dream home. That's what Michaela helps everybody do. But just get out there and get those spaces like in really good shape so that you can be happy, productive. All right, have a great one, you guys. Get out there and have a happy, productive day. Thanks, bye.